great 60 million they from Pennsylvania to the Rock and from the Great Slave Lake to the Rio Grande the herds were growing when the Spaniards saw them in 1521 60 million and growing this was the new world and 300 years went by a frontier was pushing on the west now there were 40 million buffalo and all west of the Mississippi it was 1830 and there were 40 million buffalo then came the rifles the rum and the call for robes the railroads followed only 58 years and 1888 it was 1888 and four on only a few hundred fugitives there were it was the buffalo the buffalo was food clothing shelter sport trade goods and every utensil his bile was seasoned and his chips were fired. The great mysterious one had given the buffalo. Wakantonka, the great grandfather, had given the buffalo. And the great bull buffalo had been named with the reverence of their word for father. The Sioux called him Totonka. <laughs> To the Indian, Totonka was part of the unbroken hoop of the world. And each spring, new herds rumbled out of a legendary cavern and covered the land with abundance. the wind swept the voice they shared. <laughs> the buffalo eye, the buffalo eye. I make the buffalo come. I am relatable. Some men offered their spirit powers to bring to Tonka, powers given them long ago in their vision quests. And the Buffalo Society danced. They danced to bring the buffalo. The Tonka would come if only they danced long enough. Arikara, Hidatsa, Mandan, Earth Lodge dwellers in the days before horses. The Tonka would come. The Tonka must come, for they had only moccasins to travel. And they danced. They danced through days and nights. Tatonka would come, but the vision must be danced and sung. Tatonka would come, and they danced the vision of the food. They danced the vision of the hunt. They danced the vision of the meat. It was meat when a tired dancer bent low and another dancer sent a blunt arrow to his side. A new dancer replaced the fallen one, and the women would mock Butcher. <laughs> and Tatonka came. A scout sent the sign. Without horses, they hunted like the wolves that followed the herds.
and there was meat, and there was sharing, and there was joy, and there was gratitude. Yesterday, hunger. Tonight, feasting. <laughs> Chiefs and good hunters brought meat to the lodges of the needy. First meat was for the fire, an offering to the great powers. The host waits and makes tobacco while the others eat. It is their way. Tatonka was near, and so with contentment, good humor, good stories. Tatonka was near, and in his belly boiled a stew. They take the pipe. It is an act of grace, of universal peace. The earth, the sun, and all directions, they are one. could pound the ashes from his pipe and his guests would depart. It was not so easy to end the gaiety outside the lodges. Morning brings a day of labor. It is a woman's work. The men are gone to hunt. The hides are scraped with stone and horn. The sinew is stitched in a quill work design. The jerky is stripped and dried. The hunters are gone and the women labor. It is the time of the blackening cherries. As the jerky is dried, the choke cherries are ground. Together they are wasna. Wasna, to nourish the hunters far from their lodges. And old white buffalo man waits and sketches a story of his remembering on his winter count road. has joined the hunted. He is a decoy in a surround. The decoy charms the herd leader and edges toward the cliff. The herd stares and follows, follows stares and follows. Suddenly, the 
surrounded by secret blinds and chasers. The stampede goes the way of the decoy, over the cliff. For a great hunt, there were grateful offerings. A voice and a robe of the finest quill work were sent to stay with the winds, with the earth, with the sun. Then came the horse. The Spaniards brought them. They strayed, they were stolen, they were bred. Till at last the Plains Indian was the finest horseman in the world. Now he followed the unpredictable herds. Behind the hunt came the old men, the women, and the children singing a tremolo of joy. They would find the arrows of their family and butcher. Fresh liver was a delicacy at the end of a hunt, and the juicy entrails might please the young ones. A new breed, the mountain man. He came as a hunter, a trapper, a trader. He lived on the land, same as the Indians. Sometimes he lived with the Indians. Buffalo and furs were his game and trade. The trade is rendezvous. 
the Mount Ten Dollars a robe, it was a fair shake. For the Indian, 10 cents worth of watered down whiskey might be an even trade. The traders brought whiskey and they brought guns, rifles to get more robes to trade for more rum. A cycle had been started, a cycle which had nothing to do with survival for the Indians. Soon the hides began to pour down the Missouri River to St. Louis, and soon the railroads came. They brought gentlemen hunters who slew for so-called sport. They brought hunters who killed for tongues alone, and they brought hide hunters with their skinners. The prairies began to rot with wasted carcasses, and the Sharps' rifles fired without ceasing. Horse hunting had become too slow. To get a stand with the long-range sharps was the wholesale way to kill. One man with one sharps could take 3,000 in a season. By 1869, the Union Pacific Railroad had divided the buffalo into northern and southern herds. By 1873, the hide hunter campaign reached its peak in the south. The hunters and skinners now covered the plains from the North Platte to the Arkansas River. They were a raucous blend of bumped railroad workers and Civil War veterans. They liked killing, and they liked whiskey, and they could gorge themselves on hump meat and tongue. Enthusiasm for buffalo meat was legend on the plains. The roasted marrow of a buffalo's thigh bone could be cause for a wild wingding. But if you will pay good wages, give transportation too. I think that I will go with you to the range of the buffalo. Oh, it's now we've crossed these river boys, and homeward we are bound. No more than help our country shall ever we be found. Go home to your wives and sweethearts, tell others not to go. For God's forsaken the buffalo range, and the damned old buffalo. Barrel boy! Colonel Dodge had said, every buffalo dead is an Indian gone. And buffalo extermination was the unwritten policy in the winning of the West. So the butchery went on. On the South Platte, hunters built fires to keep the buffalo from water at night and killed them as they came to slake their thirst by day. 1875 saw the end. In 1875, the great southern herd was gone. There were still great herds in the north. By 1882, the Northern Pacific Railroad was built and 5,000 hunters and skinners were emptying the northern range. Sitting Bull led his people on their last hunt in 1883. Between the Black Hills and Bismarck, they killed 1,200 buffalo in two days. It was the last free herd anyone ever saw. A year later, the hunters flocked to the range as usual. They returned with empty wagons and broke. It was 1884. The days of the still hunt, the hide men and the skinners were over. The massive herds were gone. For the Indian, the end of the buffalo meant starvation and disease. Still, he could invoke the mysterious powers of Tatonka for healing. The people still lived on the desperate hope that Tatonka would return. And for those who lived on hope alone, the medicine men became the new leaders. These were the waning moons of desolation, 
and the last robes wrap the bodies of the dead. Now a resurrection of bones was clearing the prairie. The supply wagons going south from Dodge City returned to the railroads with bones for the fertilizer and carbon works. Now unemployed hunters, drought-stricken sodbusters, and starving Indians became bone pickers. The bones of a hundred buffalo might bring ten dollars. The bone-scattered sod was the tragic graveyard of independence for the Plains Indian. Now he came to the reservations. The bright fires of strong leaders were fading. Wolf Robe, Dull Knife, Kills Buffalo, Little Wolf, Gall, High Bear, Spotted Tail, Satanta, Red Shirt, American Horse, Red Cloud. Still, once more the dream of Tatonka returned. The tree would blossom, and the hoop would come back to the people. It was the Messiah dream, a new religion. They called it the ghost dance. They sang and danced endlessly. I will live now, the father said so. I will live now, the father said so. The buffalo are coming, the father said so. The buffalo are coming, the father said so. The ghost dance had been the vision of a Ute Indian. Now it was shared by Kiowa, Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Sioux. A new world would come through the dance, and the dance brought visions of the spirit world, of departed loved ones, and of Tatonka coming again. The holy man, Black Elk, danced until a vision came. <laughs> 